wish I knew how to accurately transpose the three printed flute from a D minor flute to an E minor flute. Has this ever happened to you? Well, then look no further, my boy, for I have just what you need. This video! My younger brother Bryson recently purchased a 3D printer, and I've been very impressed with how powerful this thing is. Beyond the obvious potential of creating awesome toys and trinkets, it's also proven to be a very powerful resource, even allowing us to fix broken parts in this tripod and our RC car. As we were searching the internet for our next print, we happened upon a video of a guy playing a flute that he designed and 3D printed, and I was absolutely smitten. Due to my obsession with all things musical and my studies in the STEM field, the idea of designing, printing, and then playing your own musical instrument sounded like an absolute dream. So I got to work looking for my next build. The first group of instruments that I disqualified were stringed instruments. Although I found quite a few successful prototypes online, they all required extra hardware. Strings, tuning pegs, bridges, etc. While these all looked very successful, I wanted this first project to be purely 3D printing, so maybe I'll save them for another day. Looking at percussion, I was able to find some good designs for shakers and gyros, but I was looking for something more melodic. This left wind instruments as the clear candidate for my first 3D printed instrument. They're melodic, they don't require extra hardware, and due to their simple tube-like shapes, they're particularly well suited for 3D printing. So I decided on this Native American flute, designed by Thingiverse user 3DDS. It worked! I was so excited! Once we saw that it worked, we branched out a little bit and we tried our hand at a recorder and also an ocarina, and they both worked too. It was then that I discovered a very interesting problem. I really liked the tone and the fingering patterns of this Native American flute, but I wanted something that was able to produce deeper notes. This meant printing the same flute model but at a larger size. Bigger instruments produce deeper notes. Changing the model size itself was very simple, it's a native feature in most 3D printing software, but the issue was one of precision. The model I'd originally printed was in the key of D, so I thought something like C or B flat would be appropriate. But now the question was how to get there. If I chose a new size randomly, I could end up with something that landed in between the keys of the piano. In the business, we call this useless. So, I knew I needed to print the flute at something above 100% its default size, but I didn't know what that new size would be. After trying in vain to scribble out some sort of conversion myself, I saw that another Thingiverse user had suggested printing his design at 125% the size for a deeper pitch, or 75% the size for a higher pitch. This 25% variance in size seemed like an appropriate guess, so with blind faith, I scaled up my model and I printed. This upscale was a success. This new flute dropped two full steps from a D to a B flat. Exactly what I was looking for. While it was nice to figure out that this change in size worked, I wanted to figure out why. What was it about changing the size by 25% that landed me perfectly on another note of the piano? I wanted to know. So I did some research on the relationship between the notes of the piano and I found some pretty interesting results. To understand what comes next, all you need to know is that all sounds, including musical notes, are vibrations in the air. They're waves. These waves come with an amplitude, or a volume, and a wavelength, or a pitch. The longer the wavelength, the deeper the pitch, and vice versa. It turns out that musical intervals have a constant ratio between the wavelengths of the two notes, regardless of where you start on the piano. These ratios are based on the intervals that we can observe in nature, called the harmonic series. We'll use this table, which has the wavelengths of the notes found on the piano, as a reference. Let's try this with the octave. For the octave, the wavelength ratio between the root note and the octave is two to one, no matter where you start on the piano. This is pretty easy to conceptualize. When you play an octave on a stringed instrument, you are literally shortening the length of the vibrating string by half, or by a ratio of two to one. So the octave is half as long, wavelength-wise, as its root note, no matter where you go. While this may seem self-explanatory, I realized that expanding this concept was the key to solving my flute mystery. Every single musical interval has one of these constant ratios, not just the octave. The perfect fifth has a wavelength ratio of 3 to 2, the minor sixth has a wavelength ratio of 8 to 5, and the major third has a wavelength ratio of 5 to 4. This is exactly why increasing the size of my flute model by 25% 
decreased its pitch by a major third. The ratio between the physical length of this new flute, and by extension, the wavelengths that it would best resonate with, and the original flute's length was 5 to 4, or 125% to 100%. So, if you find yourself in the incredibly specific situation of needing to accurately transpose a 3D printed instrument, this table would prove to be incredibly useful. To use these ratios practically, we can treat them as fractions by which to multiply the default size of our models. For example, let's consider my initial experiment. If I had this table when I was first trying to transpose my flute, I would find the ratio for the major third, 5 to 4, and I would multiply the default 100% size by this ratio. This would bring the default size of 100% all the way up to 125%, dropping the pitch by a major third. All this talk about sizes and ratios and percentages might be intellectually stimulating for some, or outright boring for others, but I think the most important question which I'm yet to address still lies before us. Does it rock? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does rock.